Okay, so we're going to configure some DHCP. Uh, we have discussed how DHCP works with those discover, off, uh, discover, offer, request, acknowledge series of packets, and uh, we're going to set that up on our network. So in a larger environment, you'll often have some sort of server out there that's running uh, DHCP and providing addresses to your networks, uh, or a number of servers. And we'll discuss how to configure that and set that up here uh, towards the end, but starting out, uh, we're just going to configure that on the actual routers themselves, which you can also do. The difference though is with the routers, you actually configure them to provide DHCP using all of the IP addresses of a subnet, and then you have to tell it to exclude specific addresses. With other vendors and other uh, servers and such for DHCP, you actually configure a pool range where it's only this address to this address used for the addresses. Uh, so it's kind of like the inverse of that idea for the routers where use everything except for these, whereas other vendors it will be uh, use only these IP addresses and ignore everything else. Uh, it's just the, the way things are implemented here. So what we're going to do is provide DHCP to PC0. We're going to go into our router 2, go into config mode, and we have to make a pool. So we're going to do that with IP DHCP pool, and then we have to name it something. So we'll name this IT. Goes into DHCP config mode. We then have some options. Uh, we can provide network information, which is what we're going to do. Uh, default router, which we definitely want to do. That's our default gateway info. We're going to pass to our client DNS server info if you're doing DNS. Uh, and options, which is also important if you are providing any of those additional option information to your clients, which most likely in some sort of medium to large environment you will be. Uh, you can define the option numbers and values through that. So what we'll do is start with the network command. And we'll say network 192.168.2.0 and then the subnet mask. Not the wildcard, but the actual subnet mask this time. We're then going to give it the default router info because I certainly want my client to be able to go outside of my network. So we're going to say use the following address for your default gateway. At this point, I'm just going to exit. We gave it the very bare minimum of information. And I want to exclude certain addresses now, which is going to be very common. So what we're going to do is uh, IP. D, whoops, DHCP, and then you can say excluded address. Instead of configuring a pool, we're going to exclude a series of addresses. And you might think it would make sense to put excluded addresses within a pool, so then each pool would have its own number amount of excluded addresses, but this is just the way it's done. So it's up one level from the DHCP config prompt. So now we're going to define the low and the high range for excluded addresses. So if you take a look here, it says low IP. So I'm going to say 192.168.2.1 is off limits, all the way up through 192.168.2.10. Uh, so theoretically, that could be all of my uh, inner network devices on this on this subnet. I could have also just pushed enter and just given it a single address, but we'll do a range. So now if we show our running config, you'll see excluded addresses, no, IP is 1 to 10, and then the pool is going to use up everything else and provide 2.1 as my gateway to our client. So at this point it's up and running, so we can just go into our client and I'm going to set that to DHCP. And if we go check we already grabbed a new address. This used to be 2.2. .2. It already grabbed an address of 2.11 and you can see on this line it says DHCP servers 2.1 so that means the, the server that gave me this info lives here. So we know that that worked correctly. So we can go into router 2 and actually verify this. We can do uh, show command. We can do show IP DHCP binding and that will show us what IP was given out to what host, and then any lease expiration uh, that's built in. 
So what we'll do is, that's that's the very basic of a config, and I can just drop more PCs on here, and they'll keep getting new addresses, and, and everything will work just dandy. Uh, what we'll do now is we're going to configure it as if it were a larger environment, and you had a specific DNS uh, DHCP server somewhere else on a different subnet. And so you, at this point, you might be thinking, well, if you're putting it on a different subnet, how does the traffic get there? Because when you do a DHCP discover, it broadcasts out from the client, and then it's going to stop when it hits that router. So that's your broadcast domain. How do you get it to go through this network and then go talk to the server? How does, how does it get there? We're going to do that with what's called an IP helper. So we'll go into router 2, and we're going to turn off DHCP on router 2, turn it on on server 0, and then we're going to put a specific IP helper here that tells it that DHCP traffic uh, will be forwarded over this direction. So we're going to go into here and we're going to say no IP DHCP pool IT and that turns off my pool. I can leave the excluded addresses configured because that doesn't do anything. The pool's turned off so there's nothing to worry about there. We're going to go into our server and we're going to set this up. This is relatively easy so we just turn on DHCP we're going to do uh, 192.168.2.1 and the way this works is you can create multiple pools and this is you know the built-in one packet tracer but a normal uh, server will have similar set of options that runs DHCP like Windows DHCP server or something like that and you can create a pool for each network that you wish to service so it's quite often you'll see many many pools in a DHCP server uh, because it's servicing multiple subnets. So I'm just going to set up one right now though. And then here's where you can see Lookout says a start IP. It's a little different from use the whole network except for these certain addresses. So 192.168.2.10 we'll start at. And then put in our subnet mask. That's a slash 24. Save that info. And that's now shown in there. Now we're going to have to give this uh, server an address on this network up here. So he's going to have to be a dot one, and we'll name it. We'll make it dot two, and then I'll give it a gateway as well. So one nine two one six eight one dot one. So now this server is all configured. DHCP is running on it, and now we're going to link it up to our switch. Let it boot up. That's all good. This spanning tree is going to do its thing, which we'll be talking about. And now we're going to go into our router, and we have to configure this. Uh, we have to configure this helper address. So what we have to do is IP. Uh, we have to go into the interface actually. So the interface that's going to be receiving the traffic, which will be this one. So FA01 is going to be receiving traffic that I'm then going to send through the IP helper command to a different destination. So once we're in the interface we can then say IP helper and it's going to say where do you want to send it. I'm going to send it to 1.2 which will be our server up here and that's all there is to it. If I go into my PC0 I'm going to tell it to go get a new address. So we're going to release and renew.
Looks like that was the problem. It was the wrong range. Thought it was the wrong interface for a second there too, but let's go take that off of uh, zero zero. Okay, much better. <laughs> All right, so my server, that was a little bit of good troubleshooting, so I wasn't getting an address. So my first thought was, did I put the wrong interface on there or something? So I went to and tried that. That didn't work. Uh, so I went and checked the server, and uh, the start IP address was not correct. It was set for the other subnet. Uh, for some reason, that didn't save. So I changed that, got that fixed, and then we're good to go here. So FastEtho1 has the IP helper address, so that's this side of the router. When it receives the request, it's going to hit that. The router's going to send it off to 1.2. 1.2 will then respond back and so on. And they'll do that four way DHCP packet transmission. And then PC0 gets his IP. And we can check and make sure that it did actually get it from the server because we can take a look at this and it'll say 1.2. So we definitely know that's the server up here. Got its address of 2.10. That was the first usable address I let it uh, use, and everything works correctly.